I'll shoot him. Now, I, uh, and then we learned about how the elderly of America at that time were being over-medicated, mismedicated to a large degree. Thousands of elderly were being put in nursing homes all around the country and <clears throat> hit in the head with Haldol, Haldol and Melorel, two really powerful antipsychotics. And what we discovered was through FOI and of the um, FDA, I can't remember which agency it was, that what was happening was <clears throat> you might uh, admit your grandparent or someone and, and they may complain about the food or complain about anything because lots of times these places were not good places. And so rather than hire another nurse, more staff, they just give them a Haldol pill or a Melorill and would knock them out. And so at that time, people were going into nursing homes and seeing all these people in wheelchairs with their heads down. You know, you just think, well, that's a natural state when you get to that age. No. The Haldol was, was crippling them in every way, but especially mentally. I mean, they're cognitively, they didn't complain anymore, that's for sure. And uh, so that led to about a 28 page special investigation into uh, the mistreatment of, of, of the elderly. America. Um, we were fortunate enough in both those cases to be finalists in the Indian case and the, the uh, elderly abuse to be finalists for the Pulitzer. We didn't win. We were bridesmaids both days, both, both, both years. <clears throat> the, uh, I guess the point that I wanted to make, <clears throat> Patrick Henry said, uh, liberties of a people nor were nor ever will be secure when the transactions of their rulers may be concealed from them. <clears throat> and we all know after just living and listening today, just, there are lots of people who want to keep out the information. And FOI can make such a huge difference, and it does. It has in my case for 50 years now, and everywhere I've been. And, uh, some things I wonder about, you know, I, I was asking Joey about this in the break, that if you run for office in a free country like this, and you're elected by the public to do their business honorably, respectively, why would you not do it? What happens once you're in office with your group of friends and board members or whoever, or elected officials, why wouldn't you want to do your job right? I, if I was elected, I'd want to do it. And if someone told me to, you know, let's do it, let's do an end run and keep this quiet, I'd say, I, I don't want to do that. That's, that's not what I was elected to do. And so, but the answer, the question is why? Why in the world would you not want to do the public's business in public? <laughs> Joey said, well, Maybe some of these people are elected really don't understand the law, and so they just kind of trust their local board attorney to tell them what to do or not do. I think that's true. But I also believe another thing, that, that some of these people that end up on these boards don't realize that there's pressure involved in it. The decisions you make, not everybody's going to be happy with your decisions because you're following your own moral code or your own, what you know is right. And so you want to do it quiet. You want to do it behind the scenes so, so you don't have to face the pressure. And then all of a sudden someone comes along and issues an FOI request or the media that's doing their job. And let me emphasize that. It's doing their job instead of feeling like they're part of the system. Um, starts to ask questions. Then all of a sudden you are embarrassed. You're right in a situation that you wish you'd never gotten into because you didn't do the right thing to begin with. But, and I, get, I have to say that I get disappointed all the time nowadays in my colleagues. You know, when I look around this country and I see the media pretending to be media but really just apologists and propagandists for a political party, for gosh sakes, why do you sell yourself out? Your integrity and your credibility to please
please some politicians. Well, why do you do that? Well, I'm sure there's various reasons, uh, but it's been very disappointing to me of late to see what I have seen and we continue to see uh, in the media. Uh, because if they don't hold, if they don't hold the dishonorable uh, accountable, who will? Who will? The attorneys. You have good people like Joey who will sue you. How many Joeys are there? I know one. <laughs> you know, I look at how many other, do you read in the media about any other attorneys in their towns taking on their school board or their board of directors in the city? I know. And, you know, so I hold Joey up in my column, hoping that it will, it will transfer to other attorneys who will say, you know, Joey's doing the right thing. We need to do it here in this town. It may not, it may not happen. It hadn't so far. But I'm going to keep plugging. And, there, and there's people like uh, Robert Steinbuck, who follows me in just a moment, with his more detailed legal descriptions of what's going on in this, who also feels the same way. And he stands up for what he believes, rather than caving in to the good old boys or the system, which always has pressure on you and forces you to make a decision. You're going to do what you promise to do, you're going to do what your heart tells you is right, or are you going to cave in and go along? So, anyway, I just this is a brief account of some of the things that I've used the FLI for that have been extremely effective in making change, positive change. And um, I look forward to hearing what Robert Steinbuck has to say in just a moment. And uh, thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you.